365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tide legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 Shoe. Hey, hey, guys, welcome back to the Midday Show. We had a little intermission there, but Jasmine Todd and Caitlin Hutchinson, and we got a great guest on today, Tori Franklin, hello, hello. U.S. triple jumper, American hello. record holder, first medalist at a world championship. Wait, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you run through that one more time? I don't think the people understand who's on our show right now. <laughs> I mean, can we talk about that for a second? We can talk Let's, about it. I want to jump right into that because you did something that's never been done before. And Mm. honestly, the Americans have not been known for the triple jumpers. And then you, KO, Jasmine, you guys kind of came and turned it around. It started Mm -hmm. off with you and KO. (laughs) What was it like being at the world championships? Mm -hmm. It was such an amazing experience for me just building up to the championship last year I just felt like I was really coming into myself not just athletically as a professional athlete but uh, as a person as Tori as a spiritual light being you know and my performance was just a culmination of all of that I want to know like how famous like you are because she just named like so many things and I'm just like do you think like she walks around Budapest and I'm like Oh my God, Tori Finklin. And I'm just like, I don't, I want, I want to be stopped like that. Or like, are you famous like in America? Like, do people stop you and it's like, oh my God, like, I know who that is? Actually, I'm more famous in Greece than I am in You're America. You're famous in Greece? Why? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, because I, I've been in a few different magazines or articles and stuff. And then because I train with Miltos, Tento, Miltos Tentoglu and my coach, they're both mm. very famous there. So, Sometimes when their name gets dropped, my name gets thrown in there, too. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, so we're going to take a trip to Greece so I can really see how famous you is. And be like, I know Tori Franklin. <laughs> I know who that is. Start using that as a ball. Like, I know Tori Franklin. You know Tori Franklin? I'm like, Tori Franklin. <laughs> I know Tori Franklin. Like, that's my cousin. <laughs> that, that's Tori Franklin. Like, and, they, you, and you know what? They probably going to believe it, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they would, yeah. They definitely going to believe it. So, <laughs> what are, what, so speaking of being famous, being in Budapest, all that great stuff, what has it been like just being out here? Like, have you ever been to Hungary before? No, this is my first time. I'm really excited. It's going to be country number 31 or 32 or oh, something like that. Oh, hey, you and Jasmine. the yes. ball drop for me. Yes. Like, Y'all got that on yes. me. I've been to two countries. <laughs> you know what? You have to start somewhere. I know. And the <laughs> time number one was Italy and second time number two was Hungary. So I think I'm in a pretty good, good spot. first choices. So what are you going to do once you're done competing? Are you going to go sightseeing? Is there somewhere you want to go? Mm-hmm. What's on the agenda? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, my mom and my grandma are here. It's My oh. grandma has also been to two countries. I hate the first, and Both of them were this year, Serbia and now Hungary. So we're going to go like on a little bus on-off tour. Oh. Um, yeah, when I'm finished. Like through here or through, like to other countries? No, just here. They're oh, going on a day trip to Istanbul like today <laughs> or something. And why didn't you tell <laughs> them to pick me up? But I don't. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Come on, man. I was just a little. I'm like, mom. You have to get on a plane. That's not really a day trip. That's not how you do day trips, right? You usually like drive to a different yeah. city or something, like, or take a train maybe to a different country. To a whole country. I mean, That's, if you go, it's, it's, like not, a, it's its own trip. If you got, if you're back <laughs> in 24 hours, I mean, I mean, if you're back in 24 hours, but that's—they're new. 
It's okay. <laughs> I mean, but it's not like they have having the time of their life. They sound like very fun people, just they like their people. their daughter and granddaughter. Yes. And so I just want to know, like, how much they mean to you. Because, you know, a lot of times mm-hmm. people talk about their mothers and their grandmothers. Like, yeah. you ready to tear up. So I just want to know, like, do they usually travel with you to track meets? Like, how do they show up as your support system? Yes, they do. They show up, like, at every domestic competition that I'm ever at. Have been doing that forever since high school. Uh, my mom and my grandma, they've more recently started traveling to international trips since I'm not living in the U.S. anymore, and this is mostly where I am. So, yeah, they their first international trip when they came was Serbia, um, and I know that they're going to just keep on coming. They're already bought tickets for Paris and all of that, so Ooh, oh, they'll be around. And, ready. and, yes. you, and you got I my ticket, this. right? But yeah, we got some extras. So okay. this is their first <laughs> time coming to see you at, like, World Championships in Serbia and then... Yeah, here? they came here. And then, of course, okay, they were in Eugene. Of course, Eugene. Yeah. But mm-hmm. eh, does that really count? I it's mean, different. it counts because you, you got your medal. Right. So maybe they're good luck. So it's a good thing that they're here. It's a good thing that they're here. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see yes. that. Okay. <laughs> uh, while we're talking about that, mm-hmm. what has been your preparation coming to Budapest been like? Yeah, so my indoor and the beginning of my outdoor season was kind of just like a slow start. We were just... We were training, obviously, but we weren't, like, pushing. And so these last, like, few weeks have been really intense. And I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really healthy. So I, I'm ready to go, and I'm excited. I'm excited. I heard the runway is hot. Ooh. I heard it. I heard I love it that. speedy. So I'm excited to see you run down that Speed runway. is my superpower. I know. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question right quick? Because you, you just talked about, like, your um your workouts and stuff. And you said, like, in the beginning of the season, you took it kind of slow. But, Jasmine, I also remember you saying the same thing about, like, your training. Like, y'all didn't go, like, super, super crazy, like, the first, like, week or two or however it was a while okay so 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 what is that about because Mm -hmm. all i know is that once i get off this plane to get back to lexington kentucky i got about 10 days and i'm about to be in hell on earth for the next three months so why so why Mm -hmm. do y'all like why why does that work for y'all like is that like a is that like a jumper thing where where you can start really slow like i don't know it's not like the training isn't hard the training's hard you know like it is hell on earth for us as well during that period (laughs) But it's just like maybe the intensity that we maybe do jump sessions or bounding and stuff like that um, is a little different. Like it's kind of hard to explain. We don't I, for me, for us, we don't do as much, but we do more speed and with more intention in what we're doing. What about 100%. y'all? Breaking down the technical side of stuff and getting very like all t- those little minuscule things that you have to do. But also you have to remember you guys go through a whole collegiate mm-hmm. like your Don't guys' season is very different. <laughs> yep. So ours is just pushed back because our season doesn't start until later in the year. So there's no reason for the professionals to start going balls to the wall mm-hmm. in October yeah. when we're not competing until August, September, November. So. <laughs> All I'm saying is that this better pay off, or if I ain't on that bus or that plane, I will hijack it. Is it going down? It's not going down. I'm just getting on it. I didn't know if you're going to be like, no, no it's no, not going down. I'm getting on the plane. Now, why would I kill my teammate? That's crazy. Nah, I'm going to be on that plane whether y'all like it or not. That's all I got to yes. say. <laughs> I kind of want to get into something that I heard. You've got mm-hmm. a book coming out. I do have a book. So it's called You Anthem, Stories and Reflections of Celebration. And basically, just so everybody knows like what an anthem is, it's like a song or a praise. And so You Anthem is about learning what it is about you that is worth praising, what is worth being sung about and celebrated. Uh, so my book talks about, it deals with my mental health journey, struggling with depression, going through um, healing after sexual trauma, and just finding my anthem and finding ways to love myself again. Yeah. I love that because that title in itself and how you explained it is so you because you're just such a free spirit and I love it. (laughs) Um, I want to kind of take it back to 2022, Mm -hmm. last year. 
indoors. Yes. We were roommates. We were. In Chicago. And they were roommates. Yes. yes. We were roommates <laughs> that attract me in Chicago. And I know at that point was one of those breaks where we were just kind of like, mm-hmm. uh, hey, we're getting old. Yes. <laughs> like, but when we're I stay, I get well, in trouble. Like, mm-hmm. because you're, you're not. not old. <laughs> It's it'd be funny, but, you but it'd be funny. She just can't. She can't take the joke, bro. She just can't take the joke. She calls all of us old because she's only twenty two. Oh, what? So. <laughs> what are you saying? We're, we're all grandmas and grandpas to her. Seriously? No, just aunties and uncles. <laughs> auntie, auntie. <laughs> but you know, while we were there, we were having moments of doubt as we're getting older. Yep. How has your mentality changed now and especially after coming back with a medal, Mm -hmm. especially having those types of thoughts and then to end your season with a medal first time ever in the women's triple jump? Yeah, that's crazy that that was the same year. All in the same year. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's just like full circle because like you said, we were sitting there like we feel like the old ladies out here. It's like, do we stop? Are we the ones that are just like, why is she still doing this? (laughs) You know, Um, and so to finish the year with that type of accomplishment is just a testament to what it means to truly believe in yourself and to kind of just not let other external voices or concerns or stereotypes, whatever, try to seek leak into your mind and change what you believe about yourself and your capabili- capabilities. That's so true, though, because, I mean, at least now, like, we got a lot of sprinters who are just like, Screw what y'all saying. I might be pushing 40 years old, but guess who's still finna go win this gold medal? Me, <laughs> baby boo. So I just want to know, like, between, like, the jumpers, like, who, like, do you know, like, what the oldest age, like, somebody has, like, competed, like, for real? Because I know, like, when I first started getting into, like, track for real, like, the, like, oldest person I knew was, like, Justin Gatlin, and everybody was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, like, he's almost 40, and he's ran, like, sub-10, like, a gazillion yeah, yeah. trillion times. So, like, do y'all have somebody in y'all group mm-hmm. that does, like, who? Because I don't know. Yeah. Um, in the women's triple jump from my time, I guess, um, Ibar Gwen was 35 when she stopped, and she was mm-hmm. still jumping 15 meters, um, like, in 20... 20- 21? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't put a new name on my list. Yeah. And then there were other women from Europe. I'm not I'm not going to try to guess what countries they were from, but they were like 36, 37 as well. Okay. So All right. They can they can keep going. So if how far I you wanna going, that, 100% that's, you want to go? 100% you can keep going. You trying yeah, to you, you can <laughs> keep going. Do so you what you trying to do? You want to. I don't see myself going to 35. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think I'll stop after the 2025 World Championships. Oh, wait. High five, Tori. Yes. yes. Tori, that's in two years. <laughs> I know. Wow, we got two years left with you. What am I supposed to do then? together. I I'm just going to capitalize <laughs> these next two years. So if y'all want to come out and see me jump, you better get on it. She's about to make me cry. Oh, She's about to be done. I mean, I feel like it's always better to end on your terms than yeah. for track to choose when you end. Yeah. True. That's and true, I got goals. True. I got things I'm working on. Oh, right what, now, what, what are we working on? What's, what's mm-hmm. next? Well, outside of my book, I also have a nonprofit. Oh, as you should. Yes. And it's called Live Happy Retreats. And it focuses on giving youth from the inner cities, like, really in there. Because, you know, a lot of African-American youth do not leave their cities. They don't see other parts of the country, let alone the world. So... What we want to do is give them the opportunity to travel, to see other cultures, to learn how to cultivate the land, to see nature. And then as well, we're also going to help them with their mental health, their emotional intelligence, and teaching them ways to manage their mental wellness. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not a kid no more, but can I sign up? You could be a volunteer. Ah, okay, oh. Beth, just get, get, go ahead and give me an application. <laughs> don't, don't even worry about it. You ain't going to worry about nothing. You said 2025? 2025. All right, but I got you. I is got this going to be in just like a local area or are you going to try to do that nationwide? It's so right now we're going to start in Chicago because that's where I have my links. Perfect. I will see you there. Let's Come start on with out. the south side. Come on you know, out. That's where I'm from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, matter of fact, I got, mm-hmm. some, I got some kids. I got some people for you. Don't Perfect. even worry about it. Yeah. Okay. So this 2024, we're going to do our domestic tour. So we're also having domestic retreats. We'll have day events all over the country and we'll have a weekend retreat for kids from Chicago. 
for that first year because that's the first year we were going to do it. 2025, we'll maybe open it up to other kids, and that's where we'll have our first international retreat to the Dominican Republic. The D- hey, if you want to volunteer, I will gladly volunteer Shoot. with yeah. you. Yeah, we need, we need volunteers. <laughs> we need people who love and support the mission. We need people who can help us get some moolah. Okay, we're in our fundraising phase. All right, so. I mean, I'm kind of broke, too, but I could donate y'all a 50 cent and half a sandwich. That's so fine. Just, just let me know. 50 cents a day adds up. I, didn't, I ain't <laughs> saying a day. 50 cents a day. I ain't got 50 cents a day. I just got 50 cents. Like one, one, one time, time payment, payment of 50 <laughs> cents and <laughs> half a sandwich. But it, it could be any, it could be a turkey sandwich or a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Just Ugh. whatever one you want. Neither. I'm allergic to peanut butter and I'm vegetarian. <laughs> well, it's not. Well, maybe the sandwich won't go to you, but towards one of your volunteers. To yourself, <laughs> <laughs> I can't make my own sandwich. Like that's, that's kind of like I'm gonna donate this sandwich to myself. Like, <laughs> all right, you know what? We'll we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you like I'm about to deny your application because yeah, why would you just offer know, that to me? <laughs> so as you just mentioned, you're vegan. How long have you been vegan for? Um, so well, I've been vegetarian specifically since like 2019, but recently I stopped eating eggs. But and I don't nasty. classify that actually um, I've been trying to menace. I mean, I've been trying to regulate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's regulated? It's not. That's what I said. <laughs> it's not. I was talking about something about my body, guys. I mean, so I've been trying to free. regulate my menstrual cycle because I would go for eight weeks straight. And yes. Yes. So I was like doing everything in the world except for trying to take birth control because the stuff's not good for you people. And I was like, I opted for the easy option. Don't though. (laughs) Opt for yourself, opt for your body. I don't have estrogen, so it's fine. It's okay. You don't. Okay. All right. Sorry, TMI for y'all. <laughs> right, we're like, I'm like, well, we're, Ooh, we're we talking about it. We real body session. <laughs> I mean, because, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I've gone the birth control route. Mm-hmm. I was like you. I mean, it wasn't eight weeks, but it was a month straight. Yeah. And they were just like, hey, girl, that's not normal. It's not what good are, for you. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Um, they did put that's me on birth me. control. Mm-hmm. And taking those pills with all that estrogen, mm-hmm. it just threw me completely out of whack. It exactly. was not good for me. And so yeah. I don't remember what the other um, hormone is, but mm-hmm. that's what I have. A, I, sorry, guys. Progesterone? I have an IUD with just pot- 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 progesterone. Progesterone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's what I use mm-hmm. instead. And it's been working wonders since. Yeah. That's good, One actually. I do recommend, but, I mean, I will just say I'm not a doctor or medical licensed person. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> if you do anything advice. that Tori does, you can sue her. Do All not. you have wow. to do. Relax. Chill. <laughs> Come on. But yeah. She's a triple jumper, guys. Yes, we just don't know make I'm a triple jumper at the okay. not 100 meter money right, right. here. Okay? okay. Let's make very clear. <laughs> But yeah, I have tried like the rubbing progesterone, which has worked. Um, so I, I support that as well. But ultimately what I had to do was I stopped eating eggs. I cut eggs three days before um, the national championship. And I have been regulated since. It's been two months and I stopped eating eggs because you know they put hormones they in all do. them things. Every, people the, don't believe and it. The, and then people be like- I talking about that since we've been here. I'm yeah. like, the food is so different it's because so you're different. getting not- hormonal food and it's even the fruits and veggies in the u.s everything is corrupted over there okay grow your own food people (laughs) this is why i don't i'm not trying to push an agenda but this is why i started gardening though i was like you know i feel like they put so many extra hormones and it does Mm -hmm. throw your body out of whack especially as a woman Mm -hmm. it throws off the estrogen like crazy which is why i was like you know what i'm just gonna start growing my vegetables yeah because at least i know where it's coming from and Mm -hmm. i can trust it Mm -hmm. and it's not as hard as you think like you can learn it for real yeah I mean, honestly, self-watering pots, guys. Yep. <laughs> Tori, do you have any other um, life information that you would like to distribute <laughs> to the public before we move on to our next guest? No, we can move on. We can move on. <laughs> well, before that, I actually, so are you excited to get out there? What day do you jump? Let's mm-hmm. let our viewers know. When do you jump? Yeah, so prelims is on Wednesday the 23rd in the p.m. of Hungry Time. Um, very detailed. So whatever, the, the middle, so pretty much the middle of the night, wherever you at. Yeah. And then finals are on Friday the 25th. So I'm, I 
can't wait to get out there. I'm super excited. Can I ask you a question yeah. about having that day in between? Mm -hmm. So the shop put, you know, they had their in the morning prelims in the and finals same day. Yeah. Do you enjoy having that day of rest or would you prefer to go boom, boom? No, no, yeah. no. Give me the day of rest. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the day of rest. She got to go reconnect. If I needed it, I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> I need this day of rest. <laughs> Definitely agree with that one. I was like, this is so strange. And then I was like, I wonder if other athletes are looking at that like, Hmm. Yeah. How did that happen? I was surprised. I was like, wait, this is the first day. How are they doing finals right now? <laughs> Already. I mean, they started off hot. So, yeah, I guess Ryan's it worked got out. The cold events warmed up for you guys. Yes. Two blood yes, clots. Yes. Where? You ain't, you ain't got no blood clots, right? We don't got to worry about no, nothing. No, no, okay, better. Okay. Not that I know of. For sure. So. And then my last question What <laughs> event besides women's triple jump are you excited to watch? Ooh. So, I really like watching the men's hurdles. Um, I am also excited about watching the 100 meters. Men and women. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, what else? Oh, men's pole vault. All I know, yes. Mondo about to get it cracking up in the sky. Cracking in the sky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tori, thank you so much for stopping by. Can I say one more yeah, thing? Yeah, absolutely. My book um, is on pre-sale on Barnes & Noble right now. You just look up Tori Franklin, You Anthem. And it will be on Amazon very soon. And I will let people know on my social media. That's the one that's important. Because if I get enough pre-sales on Amazon, that's how I can get New York Best Time Seller, how, whatever that thing is that I'm oh, trying to get. Oh, noted. So, so if you guys are tuning Amazon in, make sure is the you one. go pre-order, especially on Amazon. Yes. And if you don't do it, you're not a Real Sidious fan. <laughs> Period. Agreed. <laughs> well, Tori, <laughs> thank you so much from your busy day and best of luck to you on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> and after this break, we coming back <laughs> with Maurice Green. That's the great Unc. He used to be the 100 meter world record holder. And yeah, oh, there go Unc right there. What's up, man? <laughs> E6. Sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs, you'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills. Long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keanu 30 shoe. All right, we are back and we have another recurring guest. See, I love this. We just started Traditions in Eugene. Now we're meeting in Budapest. You know, in two years, we'll be in Tokyo all together. But we are back with former 100 meter world record holder, multiple time world champion, Maurice Green. Maurice, welcome back on Sidious Mag Live. We had to bring you back, especially on the day of the men's 100 final, to get those those hot takes. You're sitting, you're sweating already. You're in the hot seat. I, 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 yeah, it's pretty hot out here. So, you know, um, it, it's good. But I, I don't mind being in the hot seat. I, I'm used to it. <laughs> Conditions outside, what do you think right now? Is this setting up to be a fast evening? I mean, as a sprinter, I used to, I, I love it when it's hot. So as a sprinter, I would say yes. But not everyone is like me, so um, have to wait and see. Yeah, the stadium, like the way it was built, right, the wind readings have been all legal for the most part. I've never seen so many zero, zero wind readings in my life. I thought the gauge was broken at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's not that much wind going through there, but it's, it's really not windy outside either. So, you know, I, I, I like the breeze when it comes through. I'm like, oh, man, that feels good. <laughs> Give me a little breeze every now and then. 
So what stood out to you? Day one, we see, you know, the Americans taking it a little bit easy for the most part, easing up before the finish line and, and kind of just like, all right, it's through the rounds. Jamaica with Oblique Seville running, tying his personal best and running the fastest time of the day. Uh, you've got guys like Akane Simbine and then you've Fernandette Omanyala. They were floating the idea of an African sweep. <laughs> I, I thought that was a little crazy. I said the Jamaicans and the Americans might have something to say about that. But overall f- impressions from the first round, what stood out I, to you? I, I, I think like this year is weird because it's not a, a clear-cut person who's been dominating over the summer and like, okay – I know this person is on his, on top of his game. Everybody's got to watch out for him. This is really – you could flip a coin and who knows what's going to happen. Um, through the rounds, I mean, the, the guys, they do normally what they do during the rounds. Um, I, 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 one person I'm worried about is Fred Curley. He didn't look that good to me. His body position was off. He was back kicking a lot. So um, I don't know – I don't know how much – he's going to have. I, I think he's going to have a little problem. There were hints of concern like at U.S. championships, too. Like, he didn't even look that sharp well, there. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a, lot, it's a lot more going on with Fred. I mean, because if you've seen his races this year, it's not really been any good. And I, I wonder if it's because he changed shoe companies, too. He's been in one thing, and now he comes to another, and it's totally different to him. He's made, he might not be comfortable with it yet. So... That could be a possibility. I don't know, but it could be a possibility. When you're saying body positioning, what exactly are you seeing? Yeah, I just think he was leaning too far forward, and then it makes his <clears throat> his striking position is not not in a powerful position to push him down the track. So is that a matter um, of just trying to force it? Something that's not there? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think he was just trying to force it. I just. I don't. He just doesn't look. He doesn't look comfortable to me. Um, I don't think he was just trying to force it. I think he was trying to run easy. But even when you run easy, you still be in a, a good body position and able to strike well. And I, I just didn't see that from him. Can Oblique Seville, you know, he looked great in that heat. He ran through the line a little bit more than Fred did. But if you if you look at past championships, he's always looked good during, during the rounds. And then the final comes, he just don't quite get there. So he has to prove something to me. In order for me to pick him, he he did run fast though. I mean, he he did run fast, but I I'm not for sure about him. People are zero and two right now <laughs> with your pick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. who so, did you like? Yeah. Um, no, nah, you know what? Hughes looked really good. He he looked it looked really easy to him, but then again, I don't know how he's gonna be in the finals either. Um, I think if Christian can can run a complete race, if he if he takes his time at the beginning, he'll be more powerful at the end, and I don't think they'll be able to catch him. So he has to he has to navigate the front part of his race and the middle part um, to come out. So to come out. I ahead. mean, the thing that makes Christian so good is that start. Your suggestion would almost be like temper back the start a no, tiny I, bit. No, or? don't don't temper back it. But you gotta. You, okay, he has the start, but you see his transition is rushed and everything. He gets into a position really fast, so he's up and running out of his dry phase sooner than everybody in the race. He's, that's like, you know, almost nine, ten meters down the track. So now you got to hold that position for 90 meters. That's very hard to do. So if he can stretch that out a little bit more, I think he'll be better on the back end. I want to make you laugh. Marcel Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have a chance here? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, he he's just squeezed through. Uh, like uh, he has not been impressive this year. Uh, yeah, it's clearly dealing with injuries and whatnot. I guess my my question on any the front of anyone like how important is it to have that trajectory leading into the season? Is it possible to just turn it on like it's championship time? The taper goes well and someone has it. Well, I mean, you you would hope so. It, it, it's hard to do, but I think these guys have been just doing what they normally been doing we just don't see that dominant person that's out front and now it's everybody together and who's going to be able to pull it out in this final i mean listen will you see the netflix cameras all over the track and they're following this season they couldn't have picked a better season for for the drama it's a lot of excitement i guess (laughs) one of the biggest storylines noah lyles Dublin in the 100 and 200 i guess how Tiny is the margin of error for him with that start to try and like. 
I, I, make up ground on, on the guys in the final. Yeah, Patriots. but I, I, I think Noah Lyles is going to do what he's been doing. Um, it, I, he, in order for him, he has to be able to be with them at least for at the first 30 to end up doing what he wants to do. And he's never in that position. So for him to, you know, say what he want to do, I think he's far away from what he's saying he want to do. Yeah, nine six five. But is it enough <laughs> to win? Or, you know, at the very least I, for him to see It's not going to take 9 six, five I, to win this gold medal. No, I think it's going to be 80-something. Yeah. What's going on? Like, it, it seems like this year – the hundred's really exciting because everyone is in it, right? Yeah. But it's not really popping off. So why is that? I, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, now, now we're out of the Usain Bolt era, so we don't see those things anymore. So now every, and, and everyone is like, okay, now maybe I can take it. But I don't, but they're just not producing the times that, that were coming out. And everyone it's, keeps saying, I'm going to run 9-6. <laughs> like, so I mean, many guys have said that. Ferdinand Aminyala also as Fred, well, another guy. We Fred, see. Marvin, and, and Trayvon all had a, like, $50,000 bet on, like, among themselves. Runs, like, who was going to be the first one to run 9-7-something? And, yeah, no one. No one sniffed it. Yeah, they haven't got there yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, e- even back when I was running, I used to always say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then I wouldn't ever get close to what I'm saying I'm going to do. And then I just said, you know what? I'm not saying anything no more. I'm going to just go run the best race possible. Now I run 9-7. So I think with, with you saying what you want to do, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. And so then you get into the race. And you're like, oh, I got to go do it. I got to go do it. And it just is not happening. You got to just go out there and try to execute. And then things will start happening. Noah's likelihood of the, you know, the two massive goals that he's put out there. The 200 seems a bit more attainable, even though 1910 is, is fast. 1910 is still a long way away from his PR. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's still a long ways away. Do you think we see a 192 something potentially? I, I, I think you have to be pushed to that. And I don't think it's anybody who can push him to that. I don't know. Tobogo looked good in London. Yeah, the 192, obviously a little ways yeah. away from 195. But yeah. 1945, 1940, yeah, that's was, what he did was his fastest time that he had ever run preseason. So, you and know. Who, and who was around him? Tobogo, yeah. Yeah, but I mean. Only at the uh, very end. Right. Yeah. So, so to go faster than that, they both have to be going yeah. faster than that. And that's, that's not going to happen. Jumping back to the 100 really quickly. The, we just had David Rudisha here on the show. He was hyping up Ferdinand oh Amanyala. Of course. Is there any They're legitimacy all... there? Like, we, he's a great starter. It, he seems like by the 90 you, meters. You had a great comparison a couple of months back. It's like he's the regular season guy who just doesn't get it done in the playoffs. Well, yeah. we'll see. Uh, yeah, change no, the narrative no. quick. It, that, 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 that's true, though. I mean, it, it's, it's always different. Everybody, you have, you have people who can go out and run one time. But when championships come, you have to run that time again and coming again. And then an hour later, you have to do it again. Now, can you do it under that pressure and be at the top of your game and feeling a little fatigued and hold everything together? That's what makes, that's what makes the athletes great to overcome all of those things and to come out and still run fast and win. Tobogo or Sabine, Those, I guess uh, if we finish off with those two, that's every – Possible contender at all? I Either so, of those yeah. two, you think? I, I, I would say Sabini will be a beat to Gogo. I think he'll come ahead of him. Okay, but um, it, it's it's gonna be fun. I mean, just flip a coin. I mean, yes. Yeah. I I, I, I get, never know. I'm getting the feel. Maurice Green is a tough guy to please. Yeah. Like when it comes to just like the race execution and 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 what See, I, I I look at I look at things different. I, right. I don't just look at the race. I look at how the performance came about. Yeah. And what do you see where their fault if tonight. see where their flaws what, what would be impressive to you if it, if they just run a complete race yeah. i i, I want to see the whole race unfold and if and if it happens maybe they will run faster than 98 but i think 980 something will will win this i i want to pick your brain on this cuz someone explained this to me and i i need you to come in and step up 3 hours between the semis and the final that's a lot of time right yeah, we usually don't have that much time. It usually it's be bad. like an hour, hour and a half. They they make it easy for these guys. Oh, now. you think that's easy? So someone is saying like that's too much time. Well, no, you just get more time to recover. Yeah, like 
I, I I remember times going to the track like, oh, I, I it's nothing in these things. How am I going to get these things to work? If I had a little more time, maybe I can do. I remember in, in my first world championships, I was cramping up going into the final. Like, I... I, and Otto raised his hand. I was like, oh, he did that for me. Thank you. <laughs> but he was cramping up at the same time. It's like, like if you have more time, you can take care of your body a little bit better and prepare yourself a little bit better. So, um, like I said, they, they, they make it easy for them now. Because, I, I mean, I understand that they're trying to get performances yeah. and things like that, but. It, it's the 10K easier. takes a while, you know. We gotta wait. Yeah. To <laughs> We're trying to keep asses. Yeah, in that, seats. That, 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 that's for you all. Yeah. <laughs> so the women, not quite as long between their. They only have like final, 90 minutes. Yeah. But this morning we had the first round impressions of who looked good. Who I are think, you feeling positive? I about? think Shelly Ann looked good. I think Talu looked really good. Um, uh, Jackson looked good, but I think she pressed a little bit. Um, Shikari pressed a little bit. You know, I think they wanted to run fast, but Talu and Shelly Ann looked the best to me. They just jogged 11 O's and it was like a walk in the park. The, the Shelly Ann trajectory this season, a little different than we've seen in past years. It's, we haven't seen as much. You haven't seen as much, and it didn't start off good, but now, these past couple of times, she's been right where she want to be. Yeah, I like the fact, I mean, she's 37, 36, and, like, you know, like Tom Brady knows their body. Like, I have to preserve it for the big moments. And so I think that she's playing it super smart, and what we saw in the yeah. first round was impressive. No, she, she looked really good. She's focused. They're, they're going to they're gonna have a problem with her. I said in our preview podcast that if I had a guarantee that someone's going to get a medal, it was Talu. What is Talu doing so well this year that has allowed her to be consistent well, I, I think this is her second year with John. Mm -hmm. um, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, I think John has given her the, the tools that she needs, and now she has the confidence. You know, and she's been here time and time again. It's bound to happen at some time. <laughs> she, she's capable of it, so it's bound to happen at some time. I heard she only just started lifting weights. Is that... I, mean, I don't know that. I, I didn't that, was that. A heard, that was something I heard from two different people on different sides of the sport that said it. So maybe, but I well, mean. I know, I know John would make you lift weights. So, that's always, so, so she would have just started with John or, yeah. But she's been with him for two years. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm now. sure she's been lifting weights before that. What about Tamari and Brittany, the other Americans? What did you see today? And the, I, I, I like them, but I just. I think they need a little more time. Yeah. I think the other girls is just they're just they're on, on a different level right now. Right. They're they're gonna be good in a maybe a year or two, but to get a medal right now, I think it's between Shikari, Talu, Shelly Ann, Jackson. Four girls, three medals, who's gonna get it? Yeah. Our British fans right now are furious. <laughs> yeah, because that, all the British people, like, we put out these clips, and they're like, well, you guys Well, are one of them on shouldn't be in the race, though, because oh, earlier, yeah. she literally false started. That, <laughs> that lad came off of there, and she went and talked to them, and I don't know what she told them, but they let her back in the race. She spoke Hungarian, I, and they were like, all right, I appreciate cool. the effort. I don't, I've <laughs> never seen that in my entire life, Yeah, because they never back down. They like, no, you was out, you move, look at this, here it goes, get out of here. And they let her run that race. That that's surprising to me. Is Julian Alfred like too many races? You think at this point? I mean, she's been she looked strong. No, she looked strong, but I mean, I, it's tough. The, yeah, it's world is different than than yeah. NCAs. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maurice, I do a lot be, different. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be cognizant of the time because. Wait, I know you want to get to the stadium yeah, I gotta and, get and see these semifinals, but I do want to thank you. Come on real quick and just do a little wrap-up, the 100 previews. This is going to be a special We might night. have to bring you back for, for the 200. Now you know where we are. <laughs> we, we saw you on the scooter. Yes. You know, to a, a random Hungarian person out there, they're like, well, I think I saw Maurice Green on a scooter. They're probably thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really funny visual. Yeah, Maurice, thank you so much for, for this doing is awesome. this. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate All it. Right. And we'll be bringing on Lindsay Flanagan, very at right after this. <laughs> e6. Sound mind, sound body. 365 days. 
one year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 Shoe. All right, and now we're back with our final guest of the day. It's been jam-packed, but I love it. Lindsay Flanagan joins us right before uh, she's getting ready to run the marathon at the 2023 World Athletics Championships. Lindsay, your second world championship team. So uh, how's it feel to be uh, back in a USA kit in Budapest? Yeah, it's, uh, it's super exciting. I mean, I think... London was six years ago, so that was a long time. And uh, I just feel like a completely different runner from that point. So I'm like, this kind of feels like the first one, uh, which yeah. is which is exciting. Yeah. When I uh, was talking to you just before, you're like, I'm glad that I'm here. I have something to do. I have so long <laughs> until the race. I do. I have so much time. Like, I finished, because today I only had one run, like 80 minutes. And I was like, what am I going to do for That's 12 it? hours? <laughs> I was like, I'm literally going to be so bored. Um, but uh, the races are on the TV in the hotel. Uh, so, you know, there's things to do. Yeah, we're not going to the stadium. Right? Like, no. Well, I don't think so just because um, the U.S. buses, they're taking up to like 90 minutes to wow. get to the stadium. And, you know, it's more just the travel. So I was like, I'm just going to sit here and watch it uh, on TV. Yeah. So how is training and, and uh, all the prep for, for this one been going? It was really good. We, um, My coach is great. We kind of like sat down before and I was like, okay, I want to try some different things. Like I know we have the trials coming up next year. Like this seems like a good time to experiment. And like I've been in coaching situations before where it's like, you know, my way or no way. And she's like, sure, if you want to try these things, like I'm not going to tell you no. So um, yeah, we mixed some things up, like ran some higher volume and then tried to do like, you know, some of the two workout days are kind of doubling after like even long runs or those like medium runs and uh, things like that. I <laughs> watched a video, I think with Kafuzi. Oh, yeah, with yeah. Kifuzi, yeah. <laughs> and you were saying, like, it was, like, a 25-mile run, and then you go out for a double. Like, yeah. <laughs> what is your mileage if you're so doubling after 25-mile runs? I think runs? we got close to 140 for this build, which, um, like, you know, I used to be, like, 120. So it's just, like, gradual, but I've also run, like, 15 marathons. So eventually you're like, all right, let's just, like, keep this fun and just try some things. And if it doesn't work, like, we won't do it next time. So What have you taken and learned from like some of the more recent ones like a Tokyo especially you know when the marathon has been your event for for so long like it it the event is just also evolving and changing and just for sure. stepping it up yeah I mean I'm in this race in Tokyo and like I felt so fit going in and I was like, okay I'm gonna just go for it so kind of went out faster than I had um and kind of fell off at like I don't know it might have been 25k and then there was just no one around so it was just such a mental grind um and that was really tough but I think this is going to be great because this is you know, it's more championship style. Like, you know, we're not really focused on the clock. Like, sure, if you run fast, that's awesome. But it's more just like competing. So um, kind of more just learn like mentally how to stay in it when you're like, I've got 10 miles to go and there's no one in sight. So <laughs> last year's world championship marathon was so interesting. I watched it uh, the other day. I went back and rewatched it. And right from the gun, it just felt like the Kenyans and the Ethiopians just took off and ran with it. And, you know, credit to Kira, Sarah and Emma for just running one of the smartest races possible. They just kind of picked up the carnage in the second half of the race. So for you, knowing that this one is a flat course, uh, you know, it, it's likely to, to be fast again. How are you thinking of approaching it? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting because, I mean, we're going to see the course, I think, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, they said it's pretty flat. Like, I think there's, like, a couple funky, like, roundabouts. There's, like, some underground tunnels. But I ran Paris last year, and it was all underground tunnels. So I'm <laughs> like, yeah, we got this down. Um, but, yeah, I think it will be fast. So I think it's also what I learned in Tokyo. you got to, like, feel it out the first half. Like, because obviously after 30K is when it gets real. So I think, like, kind of, like, 
you know, you know who's, you know who the main people are, you know where you should kind of be. So like judging the effort, I think it will be warm, but we've done a lot of prep for the warm. So I think it kind of is fun because then that's like another, like anything can happen kind of thing. Well, then it's also like warm weather now at this point, now the knowledge is out there about the 12 p.m. start in Orlando. You're sort of like, all right, this is a little bit of Yeah, where do you land on that? Yeah, well, you know, it was one of those things where I think I always just assumed it was going to be noon. So the news came out and I was like, I I just assumed that was probably going to be the case. And then I think people thought it was going to be earlier, but I was, I mean, you look at LA and it was what, 75 when we ran, like the 10K on the track was like what 110 feel. So I was like, in no world is this going to be perfect. So I think I was like, well, this is kind of the way it is. Um, I mean, we've done a lot of heat prep for this. I guess we're all just going to have to kind of do the same thing. For you as a, you know, marathoner with eyes on the trials, like how far back does that sort of working back from the calendar of like February in Orlando, like that you start to build out workouts and inserting races? When did that process really begin for you? So that's kind of why I chose Tokyo Mm because it was an early race and obviously I was hoping to be on this team. So that gave me so much time where I like, if you do a Boston, it's just kind of a quicker turnaround. So, I mean, we were planning this since, um, honestly last year, obviously just like hoping that, you know, make the team and whatnot. But, um, yeah, this works great. I mean, you're done in August, you have time to recover. Um, I think last time before the trials I did Chicago, which obviously that's a much closer turnaround. So I probably won't start another build up until, um, November. So you kind of 12 weeks. The decision to run this, I, uh, you know, marathoners across the board, some, every opportunity to run for team USA, you have to look at the whole thing working backwards for you. Was this an easy decision to decide to come? Yeah, here? for sure. Like ever since last year, I was like, I want to be on this team. Um, uh, ran like London in 2017. It was just not a great experience. So I was like, I want this to be better. Um, I did turn down the Doha team just because I didn't think I was going to thrive in that environment. And that was right before the trials. But this mm-hmm. one, I mean, everything about it is cool. I mean, it's at a great time, like great competition. Like if it's warm, I mean, that's just good prep for um, the trials. And it was 75 in New York last year. So, I mean, all these races are warm. Like you just got to roll with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in particular, I guess like between now and the trials, like it, you don't, this is maybe like the closest thing you'll have to like a dress rehearsal for mm-hmm. it. So what are you looking to like kind of fine tune when it comes to racing? Because it's a, it, the, the fast time may come as a consequence of, of just having great competition around you. But mm-hmm. when it comes to racing, like what are you looking for in this race? Yeah, I think it's um, you just have to be able to cover moves and you have to be able to kind of gauge your effort really well. Because, I mean, as we saw, like, I mean, for instance, in Boston, they're dropping like five minute miles all of a sudden. It's like, OK, you have to be like, can I do that right now? Or is that going to am I going to implode if I do that? So it's um, we're going to have to try that because I think our trials is going to be the same. Like a move is going to be made. And it's like, can you handle this? Can you not? So um, I'm just excited to race. I was like, this is a pretty cool experience. With this many marathons under your belt, can you remember what is the most vicious move someone has made kind of around you where yeah. sort of like, all right, that was, you know, a 440 something down, you know, up heartbreak or whatever it might be. Dang, I, I got to think. I mean, I've run like 15 marathons. I'm trying to think why I can't. Um, could have been in Paris last year. Uh, there was just uh, the pacing was just a little bit off. And I think like. Uh, we were supposed to be out in like, I think it was like 224 pace. And I think our first mile was six minutes. So obviously that that's not quite the pace. And then it was like six minutes and then it was probably like 510. And like, I mean, mile two of the marathon too, you're like not incredibly like warmed up either. And you're like, oh, I wasn't really expecting that. So um, that's the first one that comes to mind. But honestly, there's probably been a lot more. I think that's cool is mm-hmm. as you're going through all the lists of places that you've raced. Yeah. Some people, some athletes, it's like, I do New York, I do Boston. I do New For York, sure. I do yeah. Boston. You're like, I want to go to Australia. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. So is, is that something that you actually think about? The idea of trying different courses, experimenting, seeing the world is, I don't know, maybe that's part of it. No, it, it kind of is. Like I did Paris last year and I knew it was going to be a quick turnaround to, to Gold Coast. And that was the one we were like, oh, I don't really know how this is going to go. Like that buildup was kind of terrible. And then it was my best race, like PR. So um, I think it's good to get out and do other races. Like, obviously, I love Boston. I love New York, uh, Chicago. But you had a pick. No, (laughs) I mean, I'm from Chicago. But honestly, after the 20, what was the warm year? 2021. That was a tough one. one Yeah, Yeah. it was it was tough for many. Um, But yeah, I mean, Gold Coast was super cool. I mean, going to Australia and it was small, too. And I feel like. Um, I don't know, obviously the ones we're doing here are like not incredibly small. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's something fun about all of them. So you're here 
with ASICs and like there's some countries with like you know you've got the Japan kit on top you know part of, did you uh, one of these? I did not but I want one yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was kind of what I was going to ask was sort of like with all these country kits and and you have the USA singlet like that seems to be like a very coveted item for like a lot of other yes. countries mm. like is there one that you're out there that you're eyeing and it's like all right I would love to trade for a whatever it is Guatemala or something like that I'm trying to think. Well, I honestly really want the Japan one now. I mean. What do you got? Yeah. Brian, <laughs> Brian, you might need to get her a. Uh, and a honestly, Japan just being in Japan in March, like just such amazing people. Everyone was just over the top kind. So um, I, I would take one of those. The Netherlands. Oh, the Netherlands? Netherlands yeah, that'd one, be another yeah. good one. Um, yeah. Brian? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now that you've done so many marathons. Yeah. What do you, after every single one, like you obviously have a takeaway. Mm-hmm. You feel like at this point you are a veteran and like, is it the recency bias of like when you look back on the most recent one, like that lesson is most present in your mind going into this one. I'm just curious because I feel like I did one marathon and now like the (laughs) next one is completely different. Completely different. Yeah. I'm not going to do that again. So I'm just curious, like how does that mindset kind of shift as you have 15 in the bank you've done two marathons i know but you don't count new york well i went out too hard <laughs> new york was I'm it was tough that. again and it then was when tough. I did another one i was like well i'm definitely not doing that again and i went out way too slow yeah um yeah i mean i think you obviously like learned something from each one but it is it's kind of the most recent one you kind of look back and you're like okay, regardless if it was a good or bad experience, like what was the main thing I would change if I did that? So I look at Tokyo and I mean, I think I just ran a little bit like crazy. Like again, that's not a race with pacers. So like kind of figuring that out by yourself. So that was another one where we're out like super fast and running slow fast. So um, I think just learning how to um, kind of conserve energy and like you can't surge that much early on. So so this team, you've got Kira D'Amato, Susanna Sullivan with you. I guess, like, what is the Team USA camaraderie like? What are the vibes? Yeah, yeah. well, no one's been here yet. I haven't oh, seen really? them yet. I think Kira got here today, so I haven't seen them yet. But we've been in a group chat, and, I mean, everyone seems super pumped. Um, I mean, I think we have a great team, and I think we can work together. And, um, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm excited. What yeah. are you defining success as for you in this race? Yeah, I mean, I just want to compete the best I can. Like, I know where the fitness is, so um, I know what I should be able to do on race day. So I think I just want to get out there, and, like, you want to be in it, too. So I think it's just, like, racing, competing to the best of my ability, and um, kind of just seeing what happens that last 10K. What is the A6 <laughs> shoe of choice on race day? Meta Speed Sky. Okay. Yes. I think I'll be wearing those for, th- there's, like, a 10K that, like. A I just heard. I was yeah. going to try and get my sister to run it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Kyle will be running it, but you're not running that one. I'm going to be right? sitting and kicking on you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the shoe game has changed so much in the For time sure. that you've been doing marathons. Is it as big of a deal as it is made out to be? Um, It is. I mean, as one who ran probably my first 10 marathons in the moccasins that were yeah. the past shoes, I mean, it is. It's a game changer. Like, you've com- completely different, and it's more um, – it's the recovery. Like in no world would I ever been able to do like a Paris and then 10 weeks later run Gold Coast. Like you needed three weeks to be able to like walk again. And that's just not like the case. You can kind of start doing workouts earlier. And I mean, yeah, I would say it is. I think of the shoes that Ryan Hall ran Boston in. Yeah. You can those are so them in half. <laughs> compared yeah. to now. Yeah. So that, no, that's a great point. And you do, I mean, it's not like you're doing one marathon a year. No, I, I mean, I did three last year. Yeah. And so, I mean, whether that was a good decision or not, I mean, the shoes helped it happen. So what do we do mm. this next week to prepare? Like what, a what's the breakdown? Do you already know what you're doing every single day? Like, I what's do. The I got the training. Workout? Yeah. Um, so it had a workout yesterday and then we kind of like keep the same schedule because it's like, okay, if you're running twice every day, it's just like, you want to feel like you're doing the same thing, even though you're not running nearly as much. So maybe it's like, you know, two like 45 minute runs, then it's like, you know, two 30 minute runs to the point where you're like, okay, the day before you're running just 30 minutes and it's like, it's over. Um, and then I think last workout is Tuesday. It's just going to be some K's and it's just like feeling good K's. So you, when you're coming out of, you know, heavy training, Mm -hmm. do you kind of like land the plane softly as a taper or do you like 140, 140, 140, 60? No, no. Um, it's more like, yeah, we kind of, we went like, you know, like you're closer to 140, then it's like lower 130, then like 120. And then this week I'll probably be like 95. And then like, you know, next week doesn't really matter. I won't even count. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's gradual. 
That's but, better in status, right? Yeah, there, yeah, I don't think I could do like <laughs> one. I don't know. That's just so extreme. I think I'd be like, "What's happening?" <laughs> body freaks. Yeah, out. we always talk about this. how impressed we are with just kind of professional marathoners around major marathons, where it's like press conference and like this sponsor obligation at the expo, and like that's part of the job of being mm-hmm. a professional runner. But it must be nice that like you know for this one, it's like. No press conference. You just yes. got to come on the City of Smag live just show. One check that yeah. box, and it's like that's it. And yeah. tried hard to get out of the City of Smag one. But yeah, just, you know, so hard, so hard. Obligation. <laughs> just had it. Yeah. yeah, Lindsay, we appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you uh, in the marathon. And we'll be out there cheering. I think we're going to be doing a live show pretty close by, so we'll just Fantastic. like pop you need up. any gels out there that yeah. you need us to run up and. Well, you know, my anything? bag is still lost, but I packed the gels, so we're good. That's um, right. You oh. lost. It's, they <laughs> lost your your luggage. So I guess like, what is in your carry on that covers you for race day? Like, where the. Shoes, Shoes, obviously. Okay. Um, I had my Normatec in there, and I had all my Asics gear, but I have none of my uh, Team USA gear, which is unfortunate. But, uh, you know, it'll come. And I'm going on vacation after, so it had, like, a lot of vacation items. So just, like, if it's here by Sunday next week, I'll okay. be fine. It's not going to be an instance uh. where, like, last year, who was it? It was uh, Grant Holloway put his jacket on Joe Kovacs, like, yeah, and yeah. it didn't fit. So, you, I mean, there's probably – there's enough USA athletes out there yeah. that you could borrow. Someone let me wear something <laughs> yeah. for the team picture. They're like, just find, like, oh, the really? jacket to wear. And I was like, I can do Look, this. Look, if your team USA gear doesn't show up, you can wear my Japan stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It, everything's going to work out for the best. So Awesome. Uh. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having Super me. Fun. This is fun. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for another day of City of Mag Live at the World Championships. We will be back tonight after the meet concludes to dissect all of the races. And I know these hundreds are going to make us go crazy. So uh, we'll see you back on the City of Mag YouTube channel after the races.